So uh, podcast class for slides. So fun facts about podcasts. Um, 51% of the population has listened to a podcast. That's a lot of people. 49% uh, of podcast listening is done at home and 22% of listening is done in the car. That's a lot of time spent listening to podcasts. And then uh, over all the way over on the right, it's kind of a, a little breakdown of how much of uh, an episode an audience like generally listens to the podcast. So all of these numbers tell me that, you know, podcasts are pretty popular, there are a lot of different types of podcasts. And for the people who do listen to your podcast, they are like captive listeners and they're probably pretty loyal to the type of content that you're creating. So podcasts are a really good way to kind of share information. Um, I think when podcasts kind of first started, it was really more for like um, people who were like super knowledgeable about really niche things. And that still is true. However, there's like a lot of people who are freelance artists or educators or other professionals who have a lot of experience creating podcasts now to just kind of like share that knowledge. So podcasts are a really good way to kind of, um, you know, talk about something that you're either really passionate about or have a lot of experience. Um, yeah. So, um, some, th Ooh, sorry, wrong window. Some things that you want to think about before you, um, oh, sorry. So these are covering in this class <laughs> are <laughs> podcast formats, uh, equipment and software selection, audio recording and editing, and then we'll talk a little bit about platforms, hosting and publishing your platform. So how to um, get your podcast from, you know, your brain all the way to iTunes. Okay, so before we hit record, um, you want to consider a couple things. Why are you starting a podcast? Who is your podcast for? Why should they listen? The format that you want to kind of uh, structure this in and how long it should be. Um, so, yes, moving on. <laughs> okay, so podcast formats. Um, everybody here has said they kind of have some experience. So these are kind of the most basic uh, format types. And you can blend any of these and people often do. So there's a solo podcast, usually just one person kind of telling a story or, you know, talking about something that they are really knowledgeable about. Uh, you have co host podcasts, so you have somebody else to kind of bounce ideas off of. You can do an interview podcast. Um, Roundtables are really fun because you can have multiple speakers and kind of personalities or characters interacting at once. Um, my favorite is probably fiction storytelling and documentary. Um, I really like fiction storytelling because it has a lot of opportunity to kind of um, create or illustrate with sound. Uh, and then hybrid, of course, is a blend of any of these. Okay. So some topics um, for you to consider during these maybe like next week or so while you're experimenting with podcasting. Um, because of all the uh, COVID stuff happening right now, we're kind of focusing on that. So some of the questions that we are offering are, uh, what are you and your family doing to stay emotionally and physically healthy? Uh, what has been the most challenging aspects of, it, of this experience? What have you learned from this experience? Um, do you have a message of hope or do you have a, an interesting story? Maybe we can sit and kind of spend like one or two minutes looking at one of these questions and then we can take one or two answers. And the slides should be available to um, through the event if you need them later on. Um, does anybody have like a response or to any of these questions? <laughs> so n n yeah, num number one. Yeah. What? <clears throat> yeah. What are you and your family doing, or to be a a, a healthy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're yelling and screaming a lot. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> More screaming than yelling, really. Um, we are crying. Um, yeah. And uh, eating, eating um, ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
That's awesome. That, was, actually, that was a CDC recommendation. <laughs> it was uh, the, the, well, I don't, well, it might have been. I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that um, a little bit of screaming and crying during this period is totally healthy sometimes. I'm also taunting my cat. <laughs> We take turns, actually. The cat taunts me, and then I taunt it. <laughs> it's winning. <laughs> they usually do. <laughs> oh, that's it for me. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. else? Sure. I, I, I have a, a running thing going with uh, my son who lives with me. Um, I'm in my 60s and have some of those underlying health conditions that they tell you, don't leave the house. So I've been having Evan do my grocery shopping. And this comes with a certain amount of bribery. Um, bags of chocolate chips may arrive unannounced and they need to turn into cookies. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and anything that can be made is kind of, you know, batch food like uh beefaroni or yeah. shepherd's pie stuff like that goes over really well because even though we don't seem to be doing much we're really exhausted by it uh, <laughs> <laughs> and other than that i'm i'm like an obsessive gardener so i've been doing plenty of that at least as much as my body will hold up to <laughs> awesome that sounds good yeah, I'm also gardening a little bit too. Uh, does it one more? Does it, we have one more answer, and then we can move on. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Megan. As I, someone who lives really far away from my family, I've appreciated the fact that um, Zoom is now the the way to hang out with people. So I feel like I get to attend all the family gatherings that uh, I would have been missing previously. Yeah, totally. I feel you on that. My family also lives away from me and we don't use Zoom, but we use FaceTime and I've kind of had to like teach my parents how to use FaceTime, like how to flip the phone and <laughs> the lens around and with how to hold it so it's not like <laughs> their eye, you know. <laughs> or just showing their thumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's been good. I am very grateful that like we have technology <laughs> during this time. Okay, good. Thank you for your answers, everybody, your thoughtful answers. Okay, so um, the podcast, or sorry, yeah, the podcasting apps uh, will go over in kind of in detail today. Um, ooh, are Spreaker and Anchor. Um, Spreaker is the one with like the big uh, like red record circle and then anchors on the bottom and then so those are good for apps um, if you have a iOS device or an Android device they work on both um, and then <laughs> and then um, the icons on the right represent GarageBand which is that guitar and then Audacity which is like the little headphones with the uh, waveform like exploding between it uh, those icons so GarageBand and Audacity on the right hand side are good for laptops if you have a laptop available. Um, GarageBand is free to download on pretty much all um, Apple devices and, and, uh, and uh, Audacity is free for um, PCs. Oh, okay, sorry, I was, saw the chat going off and I was wondering what's going on. Okay, cool. So basic episode format. Um, there are many, many formats, but this is kind of like the easiest one and might help you to kind of uh, structure your podcast. So you want to have um, a little teaser and that's just kind of like um, the brief to your uh, topic. So the episode that folks are going to be listening to. And then you have a little bit of intro music and then you can have a little bit of welcome and introduce either your subject or your guests, or you um, have act one of your story. Start playing it out, and then you can have a little break in between. I like the breaks because it's a good opportunity to either plug another episode that you have. Um, you can talk about, you know, if you have a guest on your show, you can talk about work that the guest has coming up. 
Um, or you can, can even put an ad or a sponsor in that little break if you want to. Uh, and then after the break, of course, you have your, you continue your content. Maybe you have act two and three of your story. And then after those, you do a little call to action, which is, um, you know, engaging with your audience and trying to get them to um, interact. So you either say, like us on Facebook or, you know, hit the bell on the, on YouTube to be notified every time we have a new episode if you're posting your podcast on YouTube. Many people are doing that nowadays. Um, and then you have your outro music. So basic episode format. Any questions so far? Okay. Okay, so um, when you start, before you start recording your podcast, you want to be mindful of where you are recording your podcast. So where you and slash your, your guests. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure you're not sitting in a place with heavy traffic. I don't know if that'll be too much of an issue right now because it's not a lot of people out. Uh, but you, you and your guests both want to make sure you're in rooms that are quiet. So um, avoid barking dogs, uh, appliance hums from refrigerators, or maybe buzzing from lights. Um, yes, okay. Ooh, next. And then if you have, if possible, you want to use a microphone. Um, so there's like these microphones that you can get on Amazon, and they're fairly affordable. They can range from about $8 to like 30 if you want to like buy a whole kit with a bunch of adapters and stuff. Um, but these, um, the ones that are pictured here are mini jack. So they're for like the older iPhones, uh, like the one that I have. <laughs> and But nowadays, uh, most iPhones don't have that anymore. And they have the little lightning uh, cable that is a headphone. And we will drop those links into the chat. Um, so that y'all can look at them later if you want. You don't need one super fancy, and quite frankly, this is a podcast, so no one's going to be watching you record. So I just use like the microphone that comes in my he headset because that works fine. But you always want to try to use a microphone, even if it's at least just the one on your headset, because it'll help. Okay. Facilitating clean sound. Okay, uh, after you have you know, kind of figured out your format, um, figured out, you know, where you're going to record, you know, so me knowing to not record by the train tracks, maybe, unless you want that, like, cool sound design. Anyway, uh, so facilitating sound, re sound recording, or facilitating a clean recording. Uh, you want to check your microphone, so you want to take a test take first, and then you can play it back, because you want to make sure that your sound coming in is at a good and audible level, and you want to make sure that your guest's sound coming in is at a good and audible level. Um, after you do your test take, you want to, maybe after like a couple episodes and you feel good about um, podcasting, I would always recommend to be mindful of controlling like your mic distance. So if you tend to be like a loud talker, and you're really animated and really excited, maybe you don't want to have the microphone super close in your face, then you kind of want to scoot it back a little further. Or maybe if you're like a super quiet talker, you might not want to have the microphone too far from your face and scoot a little bit closer. So um, controlling mic distance is a way of making sure that the end product of your podcast is the, the, the volume is level so that you don't have to apply as much compression to it later. So that's just something to consider when you get comfortable with um, podcasting. Another thing that is really helpful is using cue cards. Um, you don't have to use like a cue card. You can even just have like a notepad with like scribbles and you know, notes in it. It's just a good way to kind of help keep your thoughts organized and focused. Um, most podcasts, you know, if you're starting out, I would say even 10 to 15 minutes is quite a bit of content. Um, having cue cards will help you keep, uh, stay focused pretty much. Uh, um, what else I have in here? And then, oh, ah, sorry, my slides are jumping. Go back. Oh, and then the last thing that's really helpful is to prep your subject. 
Um, I like to give folks like a little brief about what we'll be going over, maybe a couple questions. If you, sometimes I like leave a couple questions off so I can have some like unexpected spontaneous answers. Um, but it's always good to kind of prep your subject so that they feel comfortable answering questions. Oh, and then as we are on the subject of recording and interacting with people, um, get close, but maintain social distance. <laughs> I feel like I have, we're like putting this in all of our slides. <laughs> so, okay, um, great. So the first app that we'll go over is called Anchor. Um, Anchor is really great for beginners. It's really good for students. Um, it's free, which is awesome, and it's available on iOS and uh, Android devices. Um, the interface is super simple. Uh, there are a sound bank of musical transitions and sound effects. Um, it's easy to record with others. And part of that is because there's a link that you can actually just like send out to people and then they can click on that link, whether they are on a desktop or on a phone and they'll just be able to join in on your podcast. So that's why I really like it. Uh, and it also offers hosting. Um, and it is like a subsidiary of Spotify. So we know Spotify, it's an established, well-known company that does streaming. So they, you know, have a very robust system to support Anchor. Um, the cons of Anchor are that you are limited by how much you can record. Uh, so it's a 30 minute maximum. Uh, and then there's also the, the editing functions are pretty limited. Um, the biggest downside of the editing functions being really limited is that you have to be really mindful about how you pace your podcast and how, um, how each segment is recorded because your editing functions are limited. You can pretty much just trim and delete things. Um, and then the sound bank, although the sounds um, do sound pretty good, they are limited. So if you're making a bunch of podcasts, you might get a little bit bored of the sounds that they do offer, offer after a while. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Is, is there a way to link um, things from like Final Cut Pro or like to, to these? To, so uh, you can use like your own music and, you know, kind of do editing. So what you could do is actually, you know, I haven't thought about, I haven't thought about exporting like a file out of uh -huh. these apps into Final Cut. So I'm gonna look, up, look into that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't realize, I hadn't even thought of that. But, um, but, you, but using Final Cut to make a podcast is like actually really great. We do that at our camps pretty often, so. Uh, that is also, also another software that you can use to um, edit your podcast if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna write this note down to remind myself to look this up. So is it better? I mean, like, is if you have Final Cut Pro um, to use that as the base, and I, then I would use Final Cut to do it. Okay. okay. Just because I feel like if you're familiar with Final Cut, it will do everything that these so that these softwares will do. Um, okay. But more robustly. At least with Final Cut. Yeah, at least with Final Cut, you will have like more detailed editing ability. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And just okay. FYI, I don't know if you can tell, but I've had to go in and out because I still am kind of on call for work. So. Oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah. And this will be recorded yeah. so you can look at it later. And also the slides and the um, lesson plan will be available so you can look uh, cross reference those notes. Are you able to send us like a link to that? I can send you a link. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And then so anchor is one app that we'll go over and then Spreaker is the other app that we'll go over. Um, so Spreaker is more for it kind of depends. I kind of think of it as like a beginner transitioning into intermediate or somebody who already has like um, some good experience and confidence with like um, audio engineering or mixing or even like video editing um, because the, the concepts in Spreaker are more like live recording and we'll see that in a couple minutes. 
So the pros about Spreaker, again, is because it's free. Um, the mixer, um, there's an audio how, how mixer. You, I'm sorry to interrupt. How do you spell Spreaker? Oh, Spreaker is S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E -E oh, oh, Spreaker, like, like with a T. Oh, with a P. Oh, with uh, a P. Let me uh, put the name in oh. the chat. Spreaker. If I wanted to, could I use the one with the T? <laughs> I don't know if that exists. <laughs> oh, it did in the 70s. Oh. <laughs> Long before apps. <laughs> um, no, but the, the, this one is called Spreaker. Um, and then, oh yeah, so there's a... So a, does it have a speech impediment? Does it have a speech impediment? No, I don't think so. I think, it, I think they probably were just like, oh, this sounds catchy. <laughs> or it sounds close enough to Spreaker. Um, but the, so there's a mixer that allows you to mix your audio. So that's really I think that that's really handy. It allows you to actually fade and control the fade, so the ramp in and ramp uh, down or out of your fades. Um, it's, there's a really handy scheduled posting function, so you can record all of your episodes beforehand and then just schedule everything to come out once a week or you know once every two weeks. Um, there's a live text chat function, which is really helpful. Um, so with Spreaker, you can also you can actually record your podcast and broadcast it live for 15 minutes. That's one of the cons. You only have 15 minutes, but while you are broadcasting live, um, you can send out a link so that your audience or your listeners can join in a text ch chat. So you can be you know answering questions and broadcasting live. Um, Spreaker also. Oh. Spreaker also works on both um, Apple and Android devices. It has Skype integration. It will publish and host your podcast as well. And it has um, metrics for you to look at later. So, you know, over time, once you build a following, you can kind of um, look at habits or trends of your audience. So then you can maybe like see when the you know, f find out when the best day to launch your new episode is because Wednesdays people happen to like, you know, your viewership happens to be higher on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. I don't know. And then the cons about Spreaker is that um, the interface is certainly less intuitive. It's kind of clunky. Um, again, Spreaker is almost like recording live to tape because you don't really have the ability to go back and review and edit things. You kind of just like, it's like a recording on a four track. <laughs> um, you have, you do have editing functions, but they are still limited. Uh, you have a limited sound bank, although you can upload your own. You, you can only have nine um, sound effects loaded at one time. And then there's a 15 minute live stream cap. Um, okay, so. Let me close my slides here and then um, share my um, iPad. So this might take a few minutes. Hold on one sec. Jessica, can I ask a question about um, recording the audio of your participants? Like I've heard some podcasts where they're, you know, Skyping people in and you can like hear some feedback. And then I've heard ones where it's really seamless. And I'm just wondering, um, how do they manage that? when um when it sounds great um so i think it's like also are you talking about when people are doing like recording through teleconference or through the internet yeah so or i think over the phone or over the phone i'm not exactly sure like what accounts for like poor audio quality in my experience sometimes it's the platform i think that zoom sounds a lot clearer than google hangout and it kind of depends also on what your internet speed is um, Seth had a good link from the last class, and I forget what it was, but it was a link to test your upload and download speeds. Um, I have a little tip for Zoom. Yes. So I, I actually do a lot of um, music education, and I, I teach, so I teach over Zoom. And there's some tweaks to get the audio better. Um, <clears throat> I, I there. Uh, and I think they're both in in Mac and PC, but um, when you go to the audio settings there uh, in the menu, 
there is an option to to um, where the microphone is. You go into audio uh, audio settings. There's an option um, for advanced settings, and when you go in there to the advanced settings, it'll say several things. Uh, but you want to turn off the. Um, I I don't have I don't have it in front of me, but it's it's it's. Uh, it's basically compression and limiting. There's two compression and limiting schemes, and one is um, um, uh, try. Uh, it, oh, background noise. It, it's it's uh, there's something to the effect about background noise, and and you'll see it in the menu. And you want to turn those off. There's also another important feature: a checkbox to check where it says um, something to the effect of keep original audio. And um, what that does is um, it does not compress the audio, so it will use, um, you'll have a much better sound quality uh, if you're using like a USB mic, and there should be a toggle switch in the screen, in the, in the Zoom screen, uh, an option, so you can turn that on and off if you want, but um, that, that will make the audio on Zoom sound much better. Oh, thank you. And I, I've heard that Skype audio isn't that great. I've never used it, but I've heard that it's kind of not so hot. I kind of feel like it can be, I feel like Skype used to be really good and then they kind of just got overtaken. <laughs> um, and I think like, oh, Anita, your mic is muted. Uh, oh, I need it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say Skype used to be great, but Microsoft bought them. Um, I think Skype audio is very much dependent on um, your uh, internet quality. Um, I notice it much more so than I do on Zoom. Usually, the way the way people do it is they record their audio from their locations, so they don't have to go over the internet, and then you can send the guests' audio um, over to the producer and edit it. You know post-production. So that's probably, you can record it right directly from the iPad or computer. Um, there's also another, um, there's, there's a number of interesting audio things of kind of like an audio guy, you can tell, but uh, I just don't have the names in front of me, but there, there's an option, there's a plug-in where you can actually receive um, uh, uncompressed 24-bit uh, 48K audio over the internet from a remote location, so you could actually conduct recording sessions um, and get, um, you know, very high quality audio. So there's things out there that do that. Um. Okay. Well, this is actually a pretty. Um, this is not the first time I've heard this question, so this is a, a good thing for us to look into, also. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing. Um, does everybody see, I was trying to get this set up, but does everybody see this interface? Uh, like it, there should be like a really super colorful screen with like a bunch of colorful tabs. One of them says record, record with friends. Does everybody see that? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so I have a couple of, um, items here located on the right hand. Yeah, I wish I could point with my mouse. On the right hand side, the section, the little, um, all the way on the right, it says, next, publish your first episode with uh, April 8th as the date. Do you all see that? Yep. Yeah, okay, great. So this is your episode playlist. Um, if folks, can I get like a, a verbal or a, you can either verbally uh, say yes, or you can click the little ch check yes in the chat. Um, how many folks are familiar with Final Cut? Yes. Okay. Mm, no, I haven't. I'm familiar with it, but I don't like it. Okay. Um, so in Final Cut, you, ha you have a place where you drop all of your clips to build out your project it's called a timeline. This little section here all the way on the right hand side is kind of like your timeline in Final Cut. So all of these um, kind of site, um, recordings here um, are represented by different colors because these are different types of media. So the, the red circle arrow here, the first one that says um, teasers at 41 seconds, that's a recording that I previously recorded. 
And then the one underneath that called Morning Color Wheel with the pink arrow or the pink circle, this is a musical transition. The turquoise one says mystery is a sound effect. And then the purple one all the way on the bottom is a uh, audio recording that I did sharing with somebody. So the red color represents a recording that I did by myself by using on the left hand side, if you can see with the little microphone icon, it says record. That is to record solo by yourself or record locally at home. A tab right underneath that called record with friends. I'm going to tap that and you'll see what it looks like. Um, so this is super easy. All you have to do to record with friends is you just uh, hit get started. And then you can invite friends and then Oh, there it is. It popped up. Okay, so you can see you can share this link with your anchor friends, with your Twitter friends, with Facebook, or you can copy the link to share with folks. Usually, like what I've done in the past is I copy the link and then I paste it in like an email or in my Google chat and then they click on it and then they can just go and arrive at the um, recording. Um, do you guys want to see maybe how that looks? Maybe if Seth can help me with this, I can send Seth a link. I'm down to party. Do this recording? Okay, great. <laughs> so in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit invite friends. I'm going to copy this link. And then I'm going to go back to my Zoom. I might have to stop the broadcast real quick. Because I can't do two things at once. Um, and then I'm going to try to find my chat box. Post it in the chat box. Please send. And it should show up. Got it. All right, give me a second and I'll do a screen share to show people what it looks like. Okay, great. Do I have to cancel my screen share? Um, Am I already canceled? Uh, don't, no, I think I can just take it. Okay, because you're the host. Sharp. Okay, people can see that okay? Yes. So that- Sorry, I don't understand. Oh, Google, be quiet. Um, <laughs> so, gosh, she always interrupts me. Um, I'm gonna just put my name in here, don't need to have an anchor account, and then email optional, blah, 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 and then it shows up like this. Oh, hey, cool, it's recording. Yeah, and then it just in, starts. And then in my iPad, I'm gonna see if I can flip it around. So I can show y'all what it looks like on this end. So uh, let me close my curtain because I feel like it's reflecting some stuff here. Ooh, can you see that? This is kind of, I'm trying to have a yep. knot. You, so, you look, you look, you're in a tiny window though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can see on my end, you know, me, I can see all the people in the chat. And then I can even, like, let's say if you wanted to share with another person, you're like, oh, hey, let's like bring um, somebody else along <laughs> to our conversation. There is a little, um, oh, where did everybody go? Oh, there I, I stopped the share. Okay, it made my windows jump. There's a little icon on the, on, right here, that looks like a little person and a little plus. And then if you click on that, you can, again, you have all these links and these abilities to share directly onto your social media. Great. And then I'm going to share again from my end, screen share. Share content, screen, start broadcast. Doot, doot. Microphone off. Back to anchor. Okay. Jay Lou, do you mind if I leave the recording? Leave the re oh yes you can leave the recording okay thanks great interview thanks Seth that was awesome <laughs> awesome okay great so you're done recording okay thanks um look at the notes okay so what it does is um it always takes anchor like a few minutes to process it's lagging I think the screen is lagging with what's going on in my screen there we go. Um, on the left hand side, that whole purple column called library, every time you make a recording, every time you edit or manipulate a clip, even in your episode playlist, 
it will it will um, put everything into your library. I am no longer screen sharing, am I? Let me try to do this again. Okay. So anytime you make any kind of changes to audio clips in your episode playlist, which your episode playlist is on the right hand side in the gray area, it will show up in your library. Oh, did y'all see that recording with Seth just appear? Yeah. Cool. So it always takes a few minutes for the audio to process. Uh, I'm from, you know, sending from like, I don't know what it does, just bits and crushes things. <laughs> and then sends us the media. Okay, great. So you can preview your clip. So I'm just going to play, push play. Oh, hey, cool. It's recording. Yeah. And then in, and then in my iPad, I'm going to see if I can flip it around. Okay, great. So let's pretend we listen to all that. We don't have to listen to me say all that again. Um, so that's, that was a way of previewing um, my clip. Uh, when on that clip located on the upper right hand side, there are three ellipses. You can select the ellipses and then open this menu and add a whole bunch of different things to your library. What I would recommend doing, um, I kind of feel like, for me, I don't like to manipulate media in my library because I find that as, is more destructive because there isn't like a great way to undo any changes that you've done. So what I like to do, and this is kind of like a roundabout way of doing it, but <laughs> it works on this app. Um, what I like to do is I like to add my media to my episode playlist, which is located on the right hand side in the dark gray area. So I'm going to push the little plus button on my recording called Recording with Seth. And now it appears on the right hand side on the very bottom. And we can see that it's got a purple circle, like a purple play button, because that is telling us that that is a recording that we made sharing it with somebody. So now I can make all these changes to my recording with Seth without having any fear of those changes like da damaging my original recording because I don't really have any undo functions <laughs> in this app. Okay, so to edit this, again, you hit the um, little ellipses located on the right-hand side. And uh, for editing, there's only really two functions. You can trim and edit, so you can kind of trim um, the beginning or the ends of your clip. So, if, you know, let's say if I was waiting three minutes for all my uh, guests to come on, our audience doesn't need to listen to the three minutes of me waiting. So I'm going to trim the first three minutes of the clip and then, you know, we'll have like a nice like uh, pre-roll into the whole episode. And then there's edit audio, which allows you to actually cut and uh, remove pieces. So with trim, uh, we just I'm just, I just selected trim by tapping on it. And it's super easy. It's pretty much just like the start and end playheads that you can move around. So I'm just going to move it around like this, trim the end off, trim the front off. And then I'm going to, uh, you can play it to preview your cut before you do it. Um, but I'm just going to hit save and trim. And then it'll take a few minutes for it to show up in our media. While we are waiting for our media to show up in our library, um, and so like it's kind of run about how it works, because um, because like you're probably thinking, oh, the clip that I hadn't edited yet is still living in my episode playlist. Um, all you have to do is delete that clip, and then when the like trimmed clip shows up in my library, I can just import it into my playlist. It's not here yet. We'll wait for it to appear. Okay, uh, another thing that you can do with your clips is, um, I'm gonna use this one. Okay, um, I'm gonna hit the ellipses. You can add music to your clip or you can rename it. I strongly suggest you renaming your segments because it will help keep track of what's showing up in your library. Because keep in mind, 
every single time you make any kind of adjustments or edits, it creates a new file and will plop it into your library. So renaming it is like really helpful for me. And then deleting all the, like, the garbage takes, the ones that I know are useless. Okay, so um, you can add music, you can rename. I'll just show you really quickly how to add music. You just tap on add music uh, to the background and then you can play to preview. So there's a whole bunch that you can pick from, different types of categories. You can even like search for stuff if you want to. You can even import your own music if you want to. I don't have any music loaded up into here, but you can. Uh, like let's say if you use GarageBand to compose a song, you could just put it in right there. Okay. So, and then you can add to a favorites. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick maybe this one. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I'm going to push the little plus button and now it says processing, processing. This time though, this file, if you notice on the upper left hand corner has like a little music note. So that lets you know that this is a piece, like a, an audio recording that I made and then manipulated and added background music like baked into the clip. If that makes sense. Um, Okay, so we're gonna wait for that to process. Um, all the way on the left-hand side, the dashboard. You have a couple other things besides record, share with friends, and library. This green tab lets you um, create a link. So if, over here it says share voice message link. The same thing as with the friends invite. If you click this, you can send a link to people and then they can actually click the link and then record a voice message for you which I think is pretty cool. Once they record a voice message, it becomes a little audio clip that you can then later put into your playlist or your timeline so that you can add, uh, you can actually add other people's comments, calling callers and stuff like that into your episode. So I think that's pretty handy. Uh, the pink one here, those are transitions or interludes. That's pretty nice. These are little musical, short musical pieces. Um, you have sound effects. That, oh, you can import sound effects. Awesome. Get sound effects. Oh, a goat. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then <laughs> you have songs. And of course, because uh, uh, Anchor is a part of Spotify, uh, you can access Spotify songs if you have a Spotify account. Um, okay, so let's say, you know, I had recorded a couple of segments with some friends. Uh, and then, you know, I put a couple of transitions in, some musical pieces. I'm going to actually, there we go, rearrange. Okay, so let's say on the right-hand side, it's my episode playlist. So it's all of the segments and musical pieces that I'm going to have in my uh, podcast. If you tap here on preview, you can listen to everything playing one after the other. So you would hear your teaser or whatever clip that I have here named teaser first, and then it plays morning color wheel, and then it plays mystery, and then it plays recording with Seth, and then it edited, and then it re then after that it'll play with the other recording with Seth. Um, does that make sense so far to everybody? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. And then let's say you want to rearrange, so you want to be like, oh, actually, this segment here, like our end kind of doesn't really sound like a good conclusion. It sounds like maybe it should be moved up to like a break before the um, commercial break. So to rearrange stuff, you can hit rearrange here, which is located on the upper left-hand side of the episode playlist. And then on the right-hand side of the clips, there's these three little lines that you can kind of tap and then like move around. And it's that easy. And then when you're done, you hit save. And then you can publish your podcast if you want. You can put in your episode title, put in your episode descriptions, customize it, you know, put in season and episode number, and then you can like publish now. I'm not gonna publish this right now, but then it would bring you to like um, a page that has your URL that you can then um, send to iTunes to like, a, you know, we'll go over the, all that later. But then once you um, upload it, you can put it on your host and then have it your host be published. Okay, so that's Anchor. 
Does anybody have any questions so far about Anchor? Yeah, I posted a um, question in the chat. If we have a Spotify account and we want to use a commercial song, um, does that kind of get around the copyright laws or? Um, it, it does not. Um, I think they'll allow you to use like a certain amount of time. But I, that's a good question though. Thank you. Um, Hey, Jessica. Yes. Um, my mom's here to approve recording. Oh, yeah. okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Jalen, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. It's so quiet. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, if we could maybe take like a two minutes real quick so I can like get my app running and making sure my screen share is working and then i'll drink some water so uh, i'm gonna take give me two minutes what app are you going to i'm going to spreaker now after this okay great thanks yeah oh, oh wrong one well she's setting that up everybody's taking a break or if you guys have questions i'm happy to field questions too I have a question. Is, was that Seth? It is Seth. Um, it's Ann Griffin. Um, Hello. Sorry, I have had to go out of the meeting a couple times. Um, so, big picture, Anchor is a place that actually kind of captures um, all the pieces. Like, because what I saw was you can import your own music, and or can you import things from you know, that you've created from um, Final Cut Pro or, or QuickTime, like into that. But Anchor is the place, like is the, um, the mechanism that kind of puts it in the podcast. Yeah, if you, I mean, so it's, it actually can go either way. So you can actually, you can import, say you'd like do something in Final Cut Pro, like cut together audio, you can uh -huh. put that file into Anchor or vice versa. Let's say you out, output something from Anchor, you can actually oh. put that in Final Cut Pro. Um, uh -huh. So somewhere down the road here, we'll probably have a have a creating a podcast with Final Cut Pro um, uh -huh. okay. type type um, class because I've I've used it and it's it's very it's it's good it's good quick cutting. It's easy to use, and then also I think some of the the um, sort of EQing and audio options are actually pretty powerful. And I have sort of like a, a Betty Crocker recipe for get, you know, good <laughs> compression and that kind of stuff. Nice. Yeah. I, okay. I have a question. Yep. Um, <clears throat> are, what do the privacy policies say of Anchor or these sites? I mean, in terms of us uploading our own <clears throat> original copyright material and you know I mean, yeah so uh, usually if you're using the free version then they will end up to one degree or the other like owning your content um so i would be weary of like using this soup like the free versions if you're planning on like building this as something but if you're just interested in like kind of playing around to see which interface and which platform best works for you then i would say you know go ahead um but if you pay for the um like paid accounts then all that content is yours um, but the free ones they own it It's a good question. Are there any other, um, uh, is there any other software that you could use on a laptop other than um, Final Cut that you'd recommend, or, you know, rather than using a, a phone app? Yeah, I would actually really recommend GarageBand. If you're using a Mac, I would use GarageBand because I'm, I'm actually a, on a PC or Linux. Uh, most people, if you're on PC or Linux, like to use Audacity. That's like the popular, and it's uh, free. And I believe also open source. 
which is nice. There's another one that's called uh, Reaper, which is good too. I haven't used Reaper, but I know that a lot of people use it, especially if, you know, it sounds like you have some experience in audio engineering. Um, Audacity is still limited, and I, I feel like the interface is a little bit clunky. Um, Reaper, you can get tons of different skins to like, you know, re, like to so change how the software presents itself. Like I have a buddy who uses Reaper, but he has like an Ableton skin on it because he's more familiar with Ableton. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for letting me do that, y'all. Um, so now we are looking at Spreaker. Um, so you can, so good things about Spreaker, again, I'm just gonna go over really quickly, is that it has um, like a mixer interface so that you can kind of blend and control, have a little bit more control of when your audio plays, how loud it plays. Um, there's a live text chat function so that you can broadcast your podcast live and also receive uh, comments live from your guests. There are detailed metrics available with Spreaker if you choose to have them as your host and your publisher. Um, there's a Skype integration um, and there's scheduled posting. Uh, the kind of cons about Spreaker is that the interface, although you do get to do more, I think that the interface is a, is a little bit complicated and clunky for what it does. Um, you have limited editing functions still. Uh, you have a limited sound bank, so you can only have nine preloaded at any one time. There's a 15 minute live stream cap, and then you are also limited on storage um, if you choose to go with their free account. I think you're only, you're, I forget if it's like limited uh, total storage or you're only limited amount, a certain amount of downloads a month. But of course you can increase all those um, if you get a paid account. Okay, so recording with Spreaker. Mm. Once I launch the app and then choose like the record icon, you can choose to either go live or to just record. I'm just gonna go rec uh, click record. Going live is pretty much the same thing as, uh, as that. Oh, sorry, hit the wrong one. I'm gonna hit record. And so now it's recording me talk. So we see on the upper right hand side of the record screen, it says 1452, because I had previously <laughs> been recording um, a um, conversation. So the good thing about Spreaker that, you, that is not available on Anchor is that you can actually pause your recording. <laughs> you can't really do that on Anchor. So on Anchor, you have to be really mindful about how you manage the, um, how you're recording your show. So let's say you're recording like a panel you want to be like, hey, folks, we're going to cover these topics, you know, in the first however much long, 10 or 15 minutes. And then you want to stop and hit pause and then make sure that saves into your library. But in uh, Spreaker, you don't have to do that. You can just hit pause and then like continue recording after everybody, you know, has had coffee or bagel or whatever. So Spreaker, you can pause, which is awesome. Uh, again, you hit pause again to, uh, sorry, you hit pause to unpause and start recording. All right, so let's say I'm done. My recording sounds good. Um, and then I'm going to hit stop now. So this is, I kind of feel like this is like my, one of my biggest frustrations besides the inter user interface with Spreaker is that um, this is kind of the only time that I really get to edit my clip. So it's not like I get to save it. It lives somewhere as a draft and then I get to like bring it up again. I pretty much have to edit it like immediately after the recording is done and save it. Um, with Spreaker, so again, if I hit play. 1452, it's because I had previous. There you go. So <laughs> um, you can listen to your recording, preview it, uh, and then the way that you want to edit it is on the upper right hand corner, there's a, a little button that says edit, you tap that. And then you pretty much like just move. Does everybody see that? I really also don't like that they make the playhead yellow, which is the same color as like the waveforms. I think it was a little frustrating. Um, but what you can do is you move your clip to where you want your cut to be. So let's say I want my cut to start here. I would just tap begin here, scooch it over to where I want to cut it out. Let's say like this gap was like, you know, me just going um and uh 
and I wanted to cut all that out. So then I tap end here. And then do you see that little piece? It's kind of hard, I feel like, to see that, but it's like highlighted. It's like a little highlighted yellow block amongst some white. You want to just like tap and hold that. So I'm tapping and holding it. Oh no, and then you hit cut. And then you can either select to delete selection or keep the selection. So I'm going to delete it because those are all these ums and uhs that I don't want. And then you can play it to listen record. to it. And so now it's recording me talk. There you go. So oh, see. no, stop. OK. <laughs> OK, done. So I can save or discard changes. I'm going to save my change. And then you would listen to it again and then like continue making your cuts as needed. And then once you're done, you could share and then like then post your podcast. So that was just like the very basic of like how to get the recording done and then how to edit. Now I'll show you like the kind of audio mixing capabilities this has. Do we have any questions so far about this? Okay, great. <laughs> okay. Um, so this section here that we're looking at on the left hand side is like, is the music playlist. If I tap this, there's a little icon that sits under the record button and it's got like th three or four little lines with like little triangles on the right side. I'm gonna tap that. And then it switches over to another menu and this is the track playlist. So this is the music playlist and this is your track playlist. So music playlist is cool because you can preload your entire episode. This is like your, I kind of see this as my sound bank for my music. So let's say I know I have like a 10 minute episode and I have, you know, I want one particular song to be looping the first five minutes of that episode. And then I want another piece of music to loop the last five minutes of the episode. This is where you control all that. You, you know, click add a song, you, um, I'm just going to use an effect because I don't have any music in here right now, but let's pretend these are audio pieces. <laughs> oh, actually, I think it has to be music. Music library. I have nothing. Oh, no. Uh, let's see if I can put a draft in here. Okay, so let's, let's pretend that that is a song and not like a piece of it's just a piece of audio. It's a proxy piece of audio. <laughs> okay, so as as I would, you know, like for every piece of song that I want played throughout my uh, podcast, I would just populate it into this section. And then while I was recording, so let's say I'm recording now, being like, hey, introducing, you know, this person, then I would, as I'm talking, and trigger, start talking and be like, oh, during the Ah. I would trigger that piece of audio, whatever it is. In this instance, it's just like another audio, audio clip and not music. But do y'all see how you can use this music playlist to upload all the songs that you would want into your podcast? And then as you were live recording your podcast, you would then go and trigger each piece of music as you needed. Does that make sense? So these are like the old eight track carts that are used in radio stations. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> so uh, oh, flashbacks. <laughs> you're live recording. You gotta be really mindful of like how, you know, pacing your guest and also yourself. Um, what is pretty cool though about this is that you can, you know, adjust your audio for each clip. So while I'm talking, so like, let's say, let's pretend I hit record and it's recording right now, and I'm talking, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it is actually recording right now. And then I'm like, okay, so I know, based off my notes, that I'm approaching the point where I want to go into my commercial break. So what I'm actually going to do is, hey, like, you know, verbally, give a verbal cue to the audience. So I'm like, hey, y'all, thanks for listening. We're gonna take five minutes, uh, and let's hear a word from our sponsors. As I do that, I'm just gonna hit my play, uh, my, High school music. And then I can fade. It was hilarious when they did this joke and then. Or fade out. So then you can actually like control, you know, the, the ramp up and ramp out of your music or your ad or whatever. But because you cannot do that in Anchor. 
So this is what the, control do you use to fade? I mean, is it like just like like mouse controlled or? Oh, it's literally like this little uh, volume here. Okay, so I mean, are you are you dragging that with your yes. cursor? I'm dragging that with my finger. Oh, with your finger. Uh, okay. I'm using this on an iPad. Oh, okay. on, the cool thing, though, also with both of these apps is that they have uh, browser versions of it. So you can use the app version or the browser version. I prefer the app version because I just feel like the, I feel like the software was built for an app and then they just like ported it over to, be, to like a desktop. So I think it's just like, I see. It just fits a little bit better um, on an app. I just so think you, if you had a mouse with like a wheel on it, you could maybe fade. Uh, that's a good thing that I can look into. That's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be like way easier than like being super precise about where I put my finger and like, oh. <laughs> can the mouse fade volume? Sorry, taking a note here. Okay, cool. So um, this is the side where you would place all of your music that you knew that you wanted to play through your episode and then you would just trigger as needed. Oops, pause. Okay, so this is for music. The other side of it is for sound effects. So if I tap the little icon here, you can see that I can load actually two um, sound effects or a sound effect and a song. I'm gonna put like another sound effect in here maybe. Let's do school bell. And on this side, it looks more like a traditional mixer uh, with a little fader that you can fade between the channel that is holding my, you know, uh, sound effect called dramatic, or I can move my fader to the side that says school bell. And this is pretty cool because now you're actually able to control the mix. So for example, what you could do is if you had, like I forget who had said this, but let's say you had a um, Skype uh, interview that you had previously recorded. You extracted the audio from that interview you can actually upload that audio into Spreaker because you know you can import uh, media, and then what you could do is like mix in sound effects with the things that they're saying in the podcast that you had already recorded. Does that make sense to folks? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Based off of this mixer function, because what you could do, ideally, so let's say I in my music playlist I put my pre-recorded Skype interview. And then in my track playlist, now I have the ability two channels to load up with sound effects or music. So you're ideally, you, I mean, you're working with three different channels. You're working with whatever is on the playlist and that, and that can be music or your pre-recorded interview. And then you flip to your track list and then you, that's how you can mix sound effects or music in. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, good, moving on. Located on the right-hand side are all these uh, cute little images. <laughs> and these are all of your um, the nine uh, or so, a little bit more than nine, um, sound effects that come preloaded into Spreaker. Um, you can edit them, you can add your own. Uh, editing them just means, um, can you move them in position? Nope. Okay, so I can like delete them and then like import other things. Uh, and then to use them, of course, you would just trigger it. Like, let's say I was recording and then like somebody told a joke and <laughs> <laughs> that canned laughter, classic. Um, yeah, so that's that, that sound bank um, is available for you. And the kind of downside of using the sound bank on the right hand side is that you don't have the ability to control volume. So if you wanted to have that, you would have to like get your audio loaded into your track playlist, which is over here and moving the volume for it for your track playlist. And then you could like control the volume for that. Okay. And then after, oh, and then the chat window on the side. So you could be recording, you're, you know, triggering your ads as needed, triggering your sound effects as needed while also reading what's going on in the live chat. So this speaker requires a lot more managing. <laughs> I mean, I kind of feel like you need like a sound tech person 
somebody like just not even paying attention to the content, paying attention to like how to mix and run what's going on. So you need like a little, a, a little like a tech person and then also like a host to moderate the podcast. Okay. Um, so let's say we're done. This is great. I'm super proud of it. I've added all the sound effects that I want to it. And then I'm going to share. And then of course you can uh, put your descriptions. Best podcast ever return. Oop. Come on, let me do it now. It's not, there we go. And then it's uploading. And then it'll notify me, or I can say no thanks. Say no, it's okay. And then when I go to my podcast tab here, because uh, to record, I oops, please. To record, uh, I hit the record icon on the bottom, and then to the left is the podcast tab. So that's where I would see all of my previous podcasts. And then I could even see my analytics, which I have um, no listeners. So. There you go. Um, does anybody have any questions about uh, using Spreaker or Anchor? If there are no questions, then we'll move over to um, talk about web hosting and publishing. Okay, great. Jay Lou, can we pause for the poll? Oh yeah, sure, let's take a poll. Oh, yes. So we're interested in seeing what other types of class people are, classes you're interested in us offering. I'm gonna pop this up on the screen. Um, and you, I think you can, you can click on as many as you want. So here you go. Everybody see that okay? I'm launching the poll. Oh. stop my screen share from here. Seth, are you screen sharing right now? Uh, I am not. Well, am I screen sharing right now? I can't nope. tell. Nobody's oh, screen okay. sharing right okay, now. Okay, good. I couldn't tell because I was like, oh. We have three, we have, uh, three more people left to vote. I think that includes you, J. Lou. Oh, I, oh, I did vote on the oh, iPad. You did? Okay. Or me. I think it's me. Okay. Uh, so just, I am going to share, share the screen so people can see what the poll says. Yeah. Is it, oh, is uh, Megan still here? Okay, we can ask, we can send it to Megan later. How do you, how do you do those polls? Like, how um, do you? So I think you need to have a more, a premium version of Zoom. And then um, there's an option. Uh, there's uh -huh. a polling thing, but you have to turn it in, turn it on, on the settings in the back end of Zoom. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, we have two more people that need to vote. Can you see who has or who hasn't voted? Um, I don't think I have that level of specificity. Cause I, I don't know. I did vote on the iPad, but I can't find it on my. Okay. On it's not my popping up. Session. Okay. I'm going to stop the screen share. Okay, so I'm gonna start my screen share. I'll end the poll. So many screens. I'll share results. Ooh. Juicy, this is good information. Yes, thank you all. Thank you guys. responses. I'm gonna do a quick little screenshot. Oh, I am. Oh, sorry, this is an old slide. Let me get to the... <laughs> oh yeah, okay, before I get into, what time is it? Okay, half an hour. 
Uh, I'll, I'll just go through this quickly. Okay, before we move into um, web hosting, publishing, distributing, all that kind of stuff, I want to go over music really quickly um, because I think sound design and soundscaping is really, really important to podcasts because that's the only way that you have the ability to illustrate your story for um, your audience. Um, so some things that you want to consider when you're you know, um, choosing music or sound effects for your podcast is that um, you want to make sure that the tempo uh, is appropriate for, or that's kind of like a thing that most people kind of gravitate towards is like the pace of the song. So you want to make sure that the tempo and the mood are appropriate for your um, interview or for your content. Um, you want to make sure that a song that you pick is not too dynamic. Uh, what I mean by that is that you're not having like, you know, a, a brass section going off and then like, I don't know, like a tuba solo somewhere, um, just because those kinds of instruments that have, um, you know, a lot high peaks and lo low lows, uh, it can be kind of distracting if you're trying to pay attention to a story or an interview. So you want to have music that, you know, isn't um, too attention grabbing. Uh, you want to consider transitions. Uh, short musical transitions are really good. Those are usually audio cues for the audience so that they know that something is happening or changing. Uh, and then sound cover. So sound cover, there's a lot of kind of tricks that you can do um, to use sound to kind of hide <laughs> some issues your recording might have. Um, so people can use strings or chimes or harps or anything like that to cover like um, static, if there's like heavy static. Um, and then you can also use um, ambient sounds to kind of cover a little bit of like buzzing or humming sometimes. And then if you're like getting like really into it, like if you're using Final Cut, you have some ability to adjust EQ. So uh, sound is important. That's the only other way that your audience is able to like visualize your story and what's going on. Okay, boot, next one. So. Uh, oh, and then uh, some free resources for sound. Um, they'll be at the end of the slide. So for, for sound effects and for music. Um, so hosting and publishing. Um, podcasts need a separate home for the, all the data to be stored. Um, it's like very similar, you know, to like YouTube. You kind of need like a place to kind of to keep all of that. Um, there are many types of hosts and publishers and many of them will provide you with analytics, scheduling tools, um, like web players so that you can play different types of media, uh, a lot of different um, features all based on how much you want to pay. Um, so you might be wondering, why can't I host my podcast on my website? Um, oh, not yet. <laughs> um, because the, there's a lot of media being exchanged, there's a lot of information being exchanged. So there's folks possibly streaming live from your website or they might be downloading it from your website. Um, so, you know, you maybe don't want to tax your normal website um, base because of all the traffic coming and going. Um, how to, wait, where am I? Oh yeah, so hosting prices can be based off of, you know, how many episodes you produce, how many downloads you get, and you might be also restricted by how much data you can actually have on there. And hosting options can range from $8.99 to $24.99 a month, so, uh, or to free, because Spreaker and Anchor are free. Um, some popular hosts are SoundCloud. SoundCloud is completely free. You can um, host on Spotify, iTunes, um, Podbean, and Buzzsprout. I have not used Podbean and Buzzsprout, but they seem to be pretty popular. Um, so one of the next kind of logical step question is how do you get your podcast to iTunes or any other kind of like publishing platform? Um, so you want to number one record your podcast and then you want to upload it to a host and fill in your episode descriptions. Uh, I feel like it's really important to fill in your episode descriptions with being mindful about keywords um, because when people are searching for content or searching for podcasts there will be bots who are crawling through um, uh, text to like, I, I don't know like all the like technical stuff behind it, but it has to do with SEO. 
So search engine optimizations, you want to make sure that your descriptions in your podcasts contain things that you want people to find, right? So let's say I was making a podcast about gardening and I'm a total beginner. And specifically, I'm making a, a podcast about gardening in the Pacific Northwest. And this particular episode, I'm talking about amending clay soil. So I want to like write all those words, all, all of those, that description into my actual description because the idea is that somebody looking online for a podcast about gardening in clay soil would, you know, their keyword search would then match up with mine. So it's, a, it's all about like trying to find the right keywords to find your audience. So filling in your descriptions are important. Um, and that actually might require a little bit of research too, like knowing what kinds of keywords people are searching for when they're looking for podcasts. Oh, jumped. Um, so upload, fill in descriptions, um, retrieve your RSS feed. Okay, so after you have you know picked your host, so let's say I'm going with Anchor. Uh, after I post it, Anchor will give me a URL that, that I can submit to um, a publisher like iTunes uh, or you know Podbean or Buzzsprout. Um, it's just like a link that iTunes will then draw on to set to like get your content to drive people there. Uh, so get your RSS feed URL from your uh, host, and then you can just go and submit to iTunes. iTunes has um, a particular like ugh, account called like I think it's called like the iTunes Connect or iTunes Podcaster account. You have to get an account with them and then after you do that you can just like submit this thing you fill out your description uh you up um, and then you fill in your link and then you just wait for their approval uh, i already went over that i went over that uh, and then this slide here is just a couple of really helpful resources i find um, for free sound effects and for free music so freesound.org i love this website this is <laughs> you can spend hours on there just like listening to stuff. Um, and then if you ever want to, uh, the free sound is really cool because it's just like a big open community. People just record sounds and they upload either Foley or other sound effects for other folks to use. So I always encourage people to like, maybe explore a little bit of the Foley artists inside of them. And if you ever want to contribute back to freesound.org, please feel free to do so. Uh, and then in, in Compitech, is uh, another place to find music. Um, the, the kind of biggest downside is that this site has been around for a while and a lot of people use the music, so you might have heard some of the songs elsewhere. Um, and then Creative Commons, of course, is like a big um, open source user shared um, media like re repository. There's like video, there's images, there's music, there's a bunch of different stuff. So check out Creative Commons. Uh, when you have time. Um, and then I think that's it. Uh, do we have questions? 